Hi everyone, I am here to just do a little bit of a focus this morning for the wellbeing uh, vlog for PPU, but also we'll be sharing this with my team as well. Um, I've been asked to just do it for a short period. That's gonna be a challenge, but I'm gonna do my very best. So uh, many of you will know my background uh, in the health and wellbeing space as a metabolic coach, also a fitness instructor, uh, but really having learned so much around health and well-being from my own lived experience, uh, having had uh, quite a challenging time back in 2020. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about sleep and stress and how they kind of uh, connect with each other, how they interact with each other and how you can uh, optimise your um, sleep, well, why you need to optimize your sleep probably more than how, because I can give you some signposting on what to read around sleep to help you with it. And that's not to read to help you fall asleep. That is stuff that is uh, is going to give you some education and better awareness around it. But so if I just say to start off with that, it's absolutely paramount that we prioritize, prioritize our sleep. And that is because sleep is really our superpower. It is the thing that is wired into our very... DNA and existence as human beings as the thing that helps us to repair and to restore. And it controls so many other things. It impacts on our well-being probably more than any other of the pillars of health. And of course, all the others are, are important. But if we don't get our sleep right and we don't prioritize our sleep, the other things can fall out of balance, can fall by the wayside, just because our hormones aren't balanced in the way that they need to be. So we know that sleep helps our body and our cellular repair functions and all of those things that help us be restored physically, That it, it does that, deep sleep helps that particularly. And then REM sleep, which is our rapid eye movement sleep and our dreaming, helps our cognitive function repair itself. And it's how our body, our, sorry, our brain uh, processes all of our different experiences it helps our memories it's like a kind of process that it uses to to do all that filing uh, filing overnight so that when we get up our brains energized we're ready for the new day and we're ready for a whole new set of experiences but just going back to the sort of physical repair space so why is it so important uh, to sleep physically deep sleep get that deep sleep that is because our physical repair that takes place helps our hormone uh, balance for the next day. It helps to regulate that hormone balance. And hormones are the things that control all of our different uh, ways of operating, really, how our body is regulated, how our nervous system is regulated. And, you know, it helps our energy levels, it impacts our appetite, it impacts the kind of mood we have, it impacts how we feel. So if we aren't getting the right amount of sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep, all of those things can get thrown out of kilter. And if I give you an example, just around two hormones that are affected very significantly in relation to sleep, uh, they are ghrelin, I call ghrelin the gremlin, and leptin. Now, ghrelin is our appetite hormone. And if ghrelin is thrown out of balance because we haven't slept very well, we end up the next day having cravings for the wrong sorts of foods, for sugary foods, for unhealthy foods. So it's not just that you, your willpower is not working very well. Your actual hormone balance is driving you into a place where you're more likely to make unhealthy food choices. And the thing is, when you make those unhealthy food choices, that impacts both your stress levels because actually eating those unhealthy foods elevates stress levels, elevates cortisol, etc. So you're then not able to make uh, good choices around other areas as well. So, you know, you're less likely to be wanting to exercise. You're more likely to feel lethargic. And, um, you know, all of those things contribute to us not being the healthiest and best version of us. And the reason why I'm so focused on the well-being thing is actually, you know, it's really important that we prioritize our well-being because if we are well people, we are going to be delivering the best service to the public. And I absolutely believe that the highest performing and the best teams across the organization are going to be the ones that are the healthy teams 
Which company do you know of that is a successful, high-performing company where people are not healthy? It just doesn't happen. Morale is usually good where people are healthy, where they feel looked after, where they are taking care of the basics. And, you know, you have a responsibility to take care of the basics for you, but also your leaders are responsible for creating that best environment for you too. So I just encourage leaders and supervisors and line managers to check in with their team members to make sure that you are getting all the things that you need from a sleep perspective, that you are managing your stress levels effectively, that you are eating properly when you are at work and that you've got the best kind of environment really to perform well. Because if you're, you've got that best environment, you're going to really deliver to the members of the public. So I've talked a little bit about how it regulates that hormone balance and, and why that's important. The other thing just to say is that sleep helps us to activate our what we call our parasympathetic nervous system. And that is the part of the nervous system, which is what they kind of call traditionally the rest and digest part of the nervous system. Now, why is that important, particularly in policing? That is because we often find ourselves in our jobs as police officers and police staff in high demanding environments which cause the sympathetic nervous system to be activated which is the fight and flight type response so big demands traumatic incidents uh, moving at pace working at pace from one thing to the next often causing us to be in a state of rush which is really not helpful and I, I said to someone this week there's a difference between working at pace and rushing. I think working at pace is a good thing, but rushing is not a good thing because it causes our nervous system to be in that fight and flight mode. And when our nervous system is in a fight and flight mode, that causes cortisol levels to be elevated, also known as the stress hormone. If the stress hormone is elevated and then we don't sleep well because it's elevated for too long, we then end up in that position potentially of, of, of experiencing fatigue. So it's really important that in our day, as well as in our night, we are working to regulate that, that, whole, piece, that whole piece around stress. So we're managing our stress. We're not rushing. You know, you can only do one job at a time. You can't really do more than one job at a time. So and my message is to you as a leader, do that one job that you're doing, do it well, and then move on to the next one. Don't be thinking, I've got to get this done. I've got to get that. I know it's really hard because we're all in that space, but just develop some tactics, some, some approaches, you know, make lists, set priorities. What is the thing I need to do today to help me achieve my priorities for the week? What are the three things I need to do today? Don't eat the elephant because if you live in that space of allowing your stress levels to be too high, too much, too long, that's when you end up in a place of, of, of fatigue and burnout. But also when your stress levels are consistently high, that will play into your sleep quality. So, you know, when you go to bed, if, you, if you've been highly stressed all day, it will take your nervous system longer to come back into a rest mode so that you get the quality of sleep that you need. The other things that can affect your sleep quality and will cause an elevation of stress levels is high intensity exercise too close to bedtime and eating the wrong sort of carbohydrates too close to bedtime eating close to bedtime is not a good thing per se you should try and have a gap of at least three hours if you can two hours is better than than one hour uh, but you definitely need that wind down period before you go to bed and if you're eating carbohydrates close to bedtime your cortisol levels will increase. And, and you say, well, how do I know that? Because I've measured it on my Garmin Phoenix and I can see the difference that different nutrition will have on my stress levels as, you know, alcohol will have on my stress levels as going in the hot tub actually has on my stress levels because of the heat. There are so many things that affect your stress levels. So it isn't actually just the stress that you can see in the conscious realm in terms of the things that are obvious in a workspace or in a relationship space where things aren't going so well, those things are obvious stressors. It's often the subconscious stressors that will begin to affect your sleep quality and uh, your hormone regulation and hormone balance. 
And so I share quite a lot there. There's loads more I could share about heart rate variability. I'm already well over time. Uh, and maybe I'll do another video, uh, another recording. But what I would say is, if your sleep is not good, then um, check out my website for um, some tools on there. If not, oh, sorry, on my um, YouTube channel, I've actually done a presentation on sleep. Have a little look at that because I think I go through some of the factors in greater detail. And then I would really encourage you to have a look at the Huberman podcast as one uh, really good uh, place where you'll find stuff on sleep, especially when he interviews Matthew Walker. Now, Matthew Walker is brilliant on sleep. He's written a book called Why We Sleep, but he also will provide lots of tactics around how you improve that sleep quality. You know, that wind down time in the evening, making sure you get rid of the screens, get some bl blue light blocking glasses if, that, if that's what you need making sure that nutrition is right, you're not eating too close to bedtime, you're cutting down the refined carbohydrates. All of those processed foods are so bad for your cellular health. So I'd really encourage you to, to check more of the information out um, because it's really important that you, you prioritise sleep. And it is harder in policing because of the shifts that we have to work and particularly those on 24-7, you want to minimise what you eat overnight. You don't want to be eating, definitely not eating carbohydrates during the night. If you're going to eat anything, small protein snack, small fat snack. But I would try not to disrupt your body's metabolic rhythm. And I would try to, to fast overnight and perhaps uh, eat, have a protein shake or something when you come in in the morning. But keep your food to minimal before you actually go to sleep. Um, if you want any more information, as I say, my YouTube channel's got quite a few things on it at Maria Fox Wellness. I've also got a website, www.livewellandfree.co.uk. And I will be publishing my book fairly soon, probably the end of May. And that is called Crisis to Come Back, A Roadmap to Health Transformation After Burnout. So you can have a little read of that too if you want to. Uh, that will provide some insights around the four key pillars that I talk about, particularly nutri nutrition, sleep, stress management, straight mindset and movement. Have a great month of May. Have a great week. The sun is shining. Get some vitamin D. It's really good for you.